Hey guys, today I'm going to try starting to be a booktuber and I read a lot of books so I want to share what I read through my books and just I guess do a book review. I think doing a book review is such a good way to organize your thoughts and just remember the book a little bit better. Um, so today I'm going to start with this book called Excellent Sheep, The Miseducation of the American Elite and the Way to a Meaningful Life. That is a mouthful and a very ambitious title. It's by William Duras Lewis. His name is so hard I probably butcher that. But anyways, um, he was a professor at Yale and he does a lot of lectures related to the contents of this book. And I really think that this this is a book that all college students should read around their second year in college because first year a first year freshman freshman year is always fun for like everyone and then second year is when it gets serious and you start panicking about what the heck you're going to do about life and I certainly was that person and this book really helped me like calm down and find my peace of mind and do some soul searching. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the book review. This book really uh, helped me in 2020 and 2019. Like the problems that I was experiencing from 2019 up to the first semester of 2020. So to give you a little bit of background, like context of why this book was so influential to me, um, I am, I just finished, I finished my fifth semester. I'm trying to graduate early, um, in six or seven semesters. So my college years are almost over. How sad. Freshman year, I was really happy. I was thrilled to be going to this, to my current school, to be studying political science, which was something that I wanted to study since middle school, even though I had no idea what it was back then. But I was just thrilled. I felt like I achieved something. Korea University is one of the best universities in Korea. So I felt like... I feel really good about myself. And then second year, uh, I felt like shit because I was really, I was depressed, mainly because I felt super, super insecure. I have never felt that insecure in my life. And I was so afraid of failing. Um, political science is really fun, but there's really nothing you can do with a BA degree in political science in South Korea, at least, that is related to politics. You need to have like, a master's degree and even a doctoral degree to do the research that political scientists do and I I just I was afraid that I would basically starve to death <laughs> and because of that fear I chose economics as my double major because generally people think that economics is a easier major to be in if you want a job and that's only true if you want to go to the finance sector which i don't give a shit about like some of the things that are taught in economics is really good for is really fun for me like labor economics but then everything else is like really really boring so i don't know if i made a good decision but i have to stick with it there's no backtracking right now and yeah that was the situation that i was in i was just really unhappy really depressed really insecure but this book really encapsulates all those feelings and tries to reassure the reader and i think it's a book that everybody should read if you're thinking about what to do in your life so this book is made up of three parts i'm not going to review the entire everything i'm not going to summarize everything i'm just going to do the parts that i found was most important most influential to me so the part first part um part one is called sheep and the first chapter is called the students this chapter really grabbed my attention because he explains how essentially all the students that are going to basically American elite schools and and because I'm in South Korea, South Korean elite schools, they're all sheep. They all just go into one direction and they are really good at studying and stuff, but they just don't really have like a clear direction and everybody bandwagons onto like specific um, career tracks. And I really liked how he used student quotes to show his point. For example, the real problem is that Yaleys and our peers now feel like they're somehow wasting their degree by taking a job that doesn't pay 100k the first year or ever. I think consulting in particular appeals to this perverse fantasy that most Ivy Leaguers harbor deep down inside, which is that somehow someone should pay them for simply having gone to Yale or Harvard or wherever. And that's so true in my school too. I. I don't particularly have this pressure or desire to make a ton of money, although I do want to be comfortable. But I know that a lot of uh, my peers around me, even though they want to do a career track A, because it's not a very lucrative choice, they are forced to do B because of peer pressure or just societal pressure and pressure from parents and pressure from within, I guess. Another quote that it's not, this is not a quote, but 
I thought this was really good insight. And the author explains that at least students are told that they can be whatever they want, but most of them end up choosing to be one of a few very similar things. And I think this is something that really bothered me because when I first um, started, started studying political science, I thought people would be more interested in politics. But most of the people that study political science with me wanted to become civil servants, which I guess is kind of like politics, but it it really doesn't have anything to do with what I am studying, honestly. It's a lot to do with practical policy making or policy implementing and not the things that I want to study, which is like, why is North Korea still standing? Things like that. <laughs> lots of people want to become lawyers. Lots of people want to just get a job basically in a firm or in the finance sector or in, in a bank or whatever. And I felt really insecure because everybody was rushing to to these career paths and I was just standing there doing absolutely nothing because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, so this cha this chapter really really like I empathize with this deeply. And then the next chapter is like about American like college history which I didn't care about and I read very very lightly. Next in the chapter called the training the author talks in depth about how children are bred literally to be these math problem solving machines and they're really good at studying but in korea i definitely know what the author is talking about there is a whole like neighborhood where there's a ton of cram schools called techdong in korea i hate that place so much there's so many students who look like they're depressed um going to one cram school one acad one acad academy after another learning math and english and stuff and i know that their, their parents are desperate to send their kids to, we call them Sky, which is, stands for the three best schools in South Korea, to Sky. And it's just such a depressing place. I hate that place so much. Um, it, it literally sucks the life out of kids and sucks all the creativity and critical thinking skills that a child can have. And I just, enough of my rant. I hate that place. But yeah, um, the, this chapter also talks about that. And I, and I thought it was interesting that the US also has these kind of problems. Part two is called self and this is the chapter that I think most people want to read. I think if you don't want to read the entire book, just skip to part two and just read the self part. Part two is titled self and I honestly know everything that part two is talking about. Of course, life is more than making money. Of course, a job is more than something that makes money. College is more than a line on your resume for an education degree. A co college is a place where you should not only be building a career but also yourself your character and i already know that and i know that i will not like all like fail epically and like not be able to get a job but i'm still afraid of failing and this part two really addresses that fear and what you should be doing in college i think this part this chapter this part should really galvanize readers to do some soul searching and i did one of the things that this book helped me was opening my eyes to the reasons why i am afraid of failing and why people tend to bandwagon on these obvious career paths and i think my reason for fear is lack of information i am surrounded by people who are lawyers or working in the finance sector or whatever. I'm surrounded by peers who want to work in those big, large firms doing basically the same thing. And thus, I have a lot of information about how to become those things, like lawyers or businessmen. I don't have knowledge about how to become a political scientist. And that's, which is a very vague title, honestly. I don't have a lot of knowledge or information about any other career path other than the ones that are like obvious and popular and because i realized that i started to look for more information about what how i can make my passion which i already know very very strongly into reality and make it a job instead of something that's a hobby and i think that this book um this part of the book really galvanized me into doing that but if you don't know what you want to do, I think it this this book will really reassure you that everything's going to be okay. It's like almost uh, therapy, honestly. This book really motivated me to do some research and break away from my peers or parents or any person who wants to push this particular career in my path that I ob honestly, obviously do not want to take.
Part three was my favorite part and it's titled schools. But the greatest takeaways are two things that I want to just point out. First, your author talks about how humanities majors are equipped with critical thinking skills and they have very deep understanding of people, not just as like something to be studied scientifically, but as things as as beings who can think and feel and are able to inspire others basically. And I think that's true to a certain extent. Humanities majors definitely have a deeper understanding of people in a bigger context, like a social context. Sometimes when I talk about mental illness or sexism in our society, which I personally think, personally feel very passionate about facing directly, lots of people think I am just this very tiresome person. But as society becomes more technology oriented and more isolated, especially in these times, especially in 2020 and probably in 2021, I think it's so important to understand people's emotions, people's needs, um, and empathize with them and truly understand what they're going through as individuals instead of putting them in this practical number scientific frame. And I guess that's a very, very big benefit of being a humanities major, learning all those things. But I also cannot completely argue against the fact that hum a lot of humanities majors are really good with the pen and really, really bad with anything practical. So I think that humanities majors have to supplement their skills with like computer understanding skills or licenses. And I think that's just reality. But I also wish that society would ask the same from science majors who are really good with practical things, but they lack a lot of the philosophy, a lot of social context understanding that humanities majors have. I think asking that from science majors will make them um, not just these money-making textbook machines, but more passionate people who understand who they're helping, what they're doing, and what the consequences of their actions are. Um, I think this quote really encapsulates that thought. If you become a doctor, it will, be, it will make you a healer instead of a pill pusher, someone who treats people, not diseases. If you turn out to be a professor, it will mean the difference between becoming a pedant who teaches courses and a mentor who teaches students. Um, and I think college is a place to really find this kind of passion. The second takeaway from this part of the book is this quote. You can reflect, you can resist. You can become, in other words, a citizen. Not a leader necessarily, but also not a follower. I think there's so much emphasis, emphasis on being at the top of something and being a leader. All colleges are like, we want leadership and what show us your leadership skills and be a leader. But not everybody can be a leader. Everybody trying to become a leader is also ridiculous because that's not a good society. There's has to, If there's a leader, there has to be followers. And I'm not saying that people should become like followers per se, but I think the culture of cultivating students to just be at the top is so bad. There's so many people that are being, first of all, stepped on because you need to get to the top. And people just are racing to the top and not looking back on what they are doing, honestly. They are not looking back on who is not at the top and who can't go to the top. And they get into this weird mindset of respectability politics, which is basically saying, I can do it so you so so can you which is just not a good place for any say politician to be in and there's so many politicians who are like that so many people think that they can only change the world when they get to the top which is also a bad mental state because there will never be a top there will always be people above you and if you wait until you get to the top there's so many social problems that you could have solved but are left unsolved. I think it's really important to look at what you're doing right now and how you as a person right now can do what you can do right now to change the world a better place. And it doesn't matter what age you're, what, what your age is. Being a college student, it means that you can do so many things you and you have so little to lose. And I think it's really, really important to realize that. But our culture of emphasizing leadership is just, I think, misunderstood. Although this book was really, really helpful to me, there are some drawbacks. For example, the author keeps talking about going to grad school. I am personally am going to grad school, but I don't know anybody else in my grade that wants to go to grad school. Um, not a lot of people go to grad school. 
um, they just want to finish four years of college and get a job. And saying that humanities majors um, in with BA is good because they can do something more practical for master's degree. It feels like that he doesn't say that out down like outright, but he it feels like he's saying that, and that was kind of like I go to grad school, so that's okay. But for people who don't think of going to grad school is would feel a little bit like no god please no also the things that the author says in this book are very very um, ideal if you're for example poor it's hard to just take care of yourself and do soul searching during college you have to worry about how much money you're going to make in the few in the future if you're like first generation college uh admitted student then you have concerns like that about taking care of your family personally in south korea's context i think lots of students face lots of expectations from parents and you can't the author is like leave your parents to break away from them and easier said than done i think that's really hard to do it's really hard to do something without being accepted by your parents and with so much uncertainty with the economy these days it's hard for parents to just support you as like a writer or something you need to have a job and i think it's ideal, but there are very, very real concerns that students have. And he addresses them, but it's hard to just read this book and be like, okay, I should do something. I, I should just do some soul searching and not worry too much about money because you do need money. And if you don't have money right now, it's harder to do these these things. But if you do have money, I strongly recommend that you do not just think about money and try to be more passionate about your life and find more passion in the things that you want to do that's it for today's video um i think doing book reviews really really takes a lot of time because i'm not the type of person who can just talk on and on about especially like non-fiction books like this i don't want to twist the author's words in any way so after i read it i feel like i have to reread it and write a script but I think it's worth it to do these kind of book reviews. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe. Please, everybody stay safe. It is now so much colder and and it, even in Korea, there's so many virus cases. Um, just everybody, please, please stay safe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.